Um, it's not on his schedule yet. And James McCarthy, top owner of the Bitcoin Stock Exchange. Uh, I just want to thank Dr. Stallman for coming and speaking yesterday. It's always happy to have him. I want to thank Amir and Donald and Patrick for all the really hard work they put into this event. It's um, this, this, this is awesome. I'm like so happy to be in this place with you people. It's just like the best. So I hope you excuse me. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about. Bitcoin capital markets. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about GeoSE, but also markets in general. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself first and how GeoSE started. So I'm originally from Ireland, born and grew up in Dublin. Um, in 2008, I was working for Sun Microsystems and I lost my job along with 2,000 other people because you know Sun wasn't doing too well. This was just before the Oracle takeover. Then me and my wife, we went over to China, where I'd been for roughly three years. While in China, in 2010, late 2010, I discovered Bitcoin and became interested. And then early 2011, I started the Global Bitcoin Stock Exchange. Me and several other people pooled our Bitcoin together to uh, get this uh, idea started. It was more of like a, a fun project rather than something serious. And then it had been running for about a year and then in January, February this year, it like really kicked off and it stopped being a fun project and it became a serious project and about a month and a half later it became my full-time job and now I don't even have enough hours in the day to do that. Uh, roughly this time last year, I was the first person to buy a plane ticket for Bitcoins. Uh, that was to go over to the States. I was going to meet with someone and start a, a kind of a business, uh, head over to Seattle. And I was funding my trip with Bitcoin, and uh, as a direct result, I'm also the first person to be sent back out of the United States for trying to fund their trip with Bitcoin. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I also learned a lot about like visas and stuff like that at that time. As you tend to do when things go wrong, you find out how things actually work as opposed to how you thought they worked. Um, so, what are capital markets in general? Capital markets, marketplace is like a central place where everybody can go and buy and sell things. You know, the good thing about a market is that it's centralized and everything kind of congregates there, people and stuff and money and everything. And a capital marketplace is a marketplace for things like shares, bonds, and then all the things that are built up on top of these various assets. So a share is like a little piece of a company and if you own a share, you own a piece of the company, and usually when they pay out profits, you get a little bit of that profit. A bond is like a loan, and uh, you get interest on that loan, as a, it's called a coupon payment. So, um, in Bitcoin land, we have uh, a number of like different capital markets, the largest one being GLASE. So, why? why should we have like a Bitcoin capital market? Why should we have like a stock market? Uh, I just call it the stock market, it's easier, it's not, it does more than stocks, it does like a ton of other stuff and some very weird things as well, but stock market is the easiest thing and we tend to use a lot of the terminology from stock markets, but I'm entirely correct, it doesn't really matter though. So one of the things, one of the advantages of using uh, a Bitcoin stock market is you can have a certain level of anonymity. If you're dealing with a normal stock exchange, as a customer, as a person who's buying, you need to provide all your, your details, your passport, your the AML stuff that everybody has to do and has to provide when dealing with financial institutions. And this is just as a buyer. If you want to be a seller, someone who sells shares, uh, the requirements are even higher. So you get a bit more privacy using Bitcoin. The second element is it's extremely cheap compared to a real world or a real economy stock exchange. To run on a Bitcoin, the overhead is, is so minimal in comparison. And that's for a number of reasons. The main one being legislative because um, after spending a bit of time looking into this, well, when I started Bitcoin, I just ran into it and then after I looked into it, um, a lot of the legislation that normally applies for regular stock exchanges, and there's huge amounts of legislation and to be able to comply with them, the costs are extravagant, they're, they're enormous and you couldn't have like a cheaply run real world stock exchange. 
because the amount of money you need to spend just to be to be legal is it, it would bankrupt you. So you couldn't possibly do that. Um, one of the reasons why I think is to, originally the original purpose was to help bootstrap the Bitcoin economy. So. When Bitcoin started, you know, it was a nice idea. People were buying pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin. <laughs> like, when I first got Bitcoin, I, I mined 1,000 Bitcoin over the course of a week on my desktop. And my wife was like, oh, come on. Can you just turn the computer off? It's making a lot of noise, and I'm sure it's using a lot of electricity. And I was like, oh, well, okay. This, you know, it's just not really going to be anything anyway. And... Uh, I wish I just left it on, but anyway. <laughs> at the time, there was very little kind of services, so it was just like people kind of sending bits and pieces to each other, kind of play with it, it was play money. And we needed lots of things, we needed like Bitcoin businesses. We just, I won't even call them Bitcoin businesses, I just say businesses. We needed people who had ideas, and there were lots of really cool ideas, all the, the crypto anarchy stuff and the, the privacy stuff and the projects that people were talking about on the forums, like it was really some awesome ideas and they needed capital to get these ideas started. So this was like one of my uh, main goals for starting GeoDNC. It was to be able to get funding to cool projects that needed funding. So, uh, sorry, I just kind of have to get the points off here and then I can keep talking. So uh, it allows, Again, because of the low cost, it allows very small operations. So a lot of stuff in Bitcoin is like microtransactions. Microtransactions aren't possible in the uh, normal economy because costs of every transaction is so high. But in Bitcoin, these costs are incredibly low. So it means microtransactions are like a very normal thing. And it also means that you can have like a company where a valuation of this company is like $100 or $200, tiny amounts. So people who have incredibly small uh, amounts to invest or needs. You know, they can run like a shoestring company, an absolutely tiny, a micro company. And they can get the capital they need off one of these markets for that. And it's really awesome. You couldn't do anything like that. And what I think this allows, um, just talking about younger people, it allows a lot of younger people, teenagers, mid to late teens, who Normally, if they wanted to learn how a stock exchange and a market works, they need to spend thousands and probably lose thousands to get involved. With Bitcoin, you can, you know, start up with like a couple hundred bucks, even less. And if it all goes to hell, it doesn't matter. It's only a small amount, and you don't, you haven't lost your shirt, but you've learned a lot. Um, it scales. So it scales from like the tiniest amounts to hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars and even more. Um, at the moment, you know, GBC we're a year and a half old, but we've gone from being, you know, like a hundred dollars a transaction in a day to tens of thousands to like there's been almost millions. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but it's like been a huge amount of volume over the last few months, and that's growing and it's growing exponentially. So it scales up a lot, and it, as I said earlier, it allows people to pool their funds for cool projects and ideas that they they want to fund. So you could think of it as kind of crowdsourcing in that way, but the general idea as well as the projects, when they're successful, they can give back to the people who invested in them. And uh, yeah, so these are like some of the main reasons that we would want to have uh, a capital market. So I'm gonna give you some examples of, uh, and I know when you talk about, we talk about stock markets, people normally think of like something like this. I know, um, before I knew very much about economics and stuff, this is what I thought, like stock markets are people with tons of money and stuff. It doesn't have to be that way anymore. With Bitcoin, people can invest and play around on markets with like 50p, one pound, 10 pound, tiny amounts, and they can, you know, they can practice them. Maybe they'll lose it, maybe they won't. And it scales from the smallest amount to, to ridiculously large amounts. Um, so let's talk about some of the different kinds of businesses. I'm just going to pick two examples. I'm going to pick a really small one and then I'm going to pick a really large one. So most of you would probably have never heard of this. This is a, one of the earlier assets to launch on GMBSC. It was the Islamic Bank of Bitcoin and it was started by a guy who I don't know. Uh, actually the guy is kind of anonymous. Um, I suspect he's probably 16 or 17 years old and uh, this is one of the micro companies I'm talking about. 
Um, the total valuation is like maybe about $500. This is what it's worth. But he's been doing micro loans to people at no interest. Um, and he's, he's helped several smaller, uh, I wouldn't say companies, but several smaller projects get started with the funding they need. And it's been absolutely awesome. And the fact that, like, you know, something that's only a couple hundred dollars and it's run by someone who, who's anonymous, although personally our experience has been uh, anonymous people selling shares hasn't turned out very well. Uh, this one has turned out not too bad, actually. It's been, I, I think, in part because of the amounts involved, you know, uh, small amounts, the guy really kind of cares about it. Uh, but if it was a large amount, then it would just you know, disappear and not come back. Now, if we kind of scale up and move to like one of the largest things that is on GLSE. It's a uh, it's an asset called Giga Mining. Has anybody heard of Giga Mining? Yes, we have quite a few people. Okay, it's like one of the largest mining operations in Bitcoin land, and it's run by James Gibson, and he got his funding for that off GLSE. He got like uh, nearly a quarter million dollars worth of Bitcoin to get going with that, and so you can see, and that, that was several. That was like four, more than four or five months ago when he did that, and GLC is actually a lot larger now than it was then, and it's a lot more liquid and a lot more capital there than it was then. So um, we have the small, and it scales all the way up to the very big. Uh, the next part of this is, uh, it has a knock-on effect as well. So everybody's like, knows about Butterfly Labs, they're one of our sponsors, and they have some really ridiculously cool equipment. Um, but a lot of the a lot of the funding they've gotten, they haven't like IPO on GBC themselves. But people have launched uh, mining shares on GBC and used that funding to buy tons and tons of equipment off Butterfly Labs. I would say probably somewhere around a third. This is this is just my guess. Um, Josh can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I'd say somewhere around uh, a third of all the stuff they're selling is as a result of funding coming directly from GBC. So it has a knock-on effect. Like, Butterfly Labs is the largest employer in the Bitcoin economy. There's like 20 employees there. Um, the other effects, apart from, you know, Butterfly Labs, is there are hundreds of people who are getting supplemental income from either trading or running assets on GBC. And there's dozens of people who are living off assets that they've launched on GBC. So they're able to make a proper living, and it helps the economy, the Bitcoin economy, grow. Um, I'm going to talk about sectors now. There's a number of sectors. The largest one is mining. Um, GOC originally started off like mostly with mining shares and mining bonds. And, uh, this, <laughs> I still think the concept of mining, you run, a, you run a box, a computer, you leave it turned on, and it just makes money. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> they need to shape these boxes like trees. Um, but the largest, sec the largest sector, by roughly, I think, maybe about two-thirds of GMC and all the capital on GMC is mining bonds, or mining shares, or uh, something along that line. So I would estimate uh, possibly up to 10% of all the hashing power on the Bitcoin network is as a result of shares in mining companies on GMC. So in that way, it's helping to support the, the growth of the network and prevent uh, 51% attacks. Um, another area is uh, lending. We've got a very large lending sector. And this is, um, I'd, so I'd say it's not quite the full third, but it would be like the second largest one. Uh, anybody ever hear of Patrick Carney? Yeah, a couple of people here. And um, he, he, would have been, he would be like one of the largest lenders. So he'll borrow funds off GOBC at a particular rate and then he will do his due diligence and investigate people who are asking to borrow funds off him. So he'll find out who they are and whatever, and then he'll, he'll lend. So in this way as well, it's allowing people to get the capital and funds that they need to get their projects going. And this is what it's all about. It's about these projects getting what they need to get rolling. Um, finally, I suppose, the next main area would be arbitrage. Is that, is that the correct word? Where like you have uh, money on one market and another, mar another market, yeah, arbitrage. Okay, I keep making that word up with something else. So there's a couple of um, assets on JVC which were used to fund the creation of bots 
uh, for taking advantage of arbitrage. Now, the good thing about having this, this is it kind of keeps the, the difference in prices between Bitcoin exchanges fairly flat. So you won't get a Bitcoin exchange which is like way overvalued and another which is under undervalued. So it keeps things, uh, makes things a lot smoother. And obviously people who own those shares, they get dividends from them. So um, finally, uh, GBC has been used to raise funds for a number of kind of small startups. Um, the track record for a lot of these has not been too good. I think that we've already had our dot-com uh, AstroTurf bubble bursting uh, already. Um, generally, it's not worked out too well if someone has like a great idea and they look for a ton of funds and then you know, the idea doesn't really work out or they mismanage it or, or whatever. If you read the forums, there is like, there's like a ton of drama on the forums about all this. Um, so what advantages does a Bitcoin stock market have? It's totally unregulated currently, as, at least in the UK. I don't know so much about the States. Uh, in the UK, the Financial Services Authority, as far as they're concerned, is magic money, it's, it's monopoly money, and only when it gets changed into British pounds is it, does it come under uh, their, their rules and regulations. Now this may change in the future, but as it stands, there is no regulation. So this allows for low running costs. Um, it allows for having very kind of unusual types of contracts and assets, and it allows for very small investment, as well as very large ones. Um, some of the advantages of Bitcoin as technology, when we combine that with a stock market, it has no connection with the current banking system. Uh, anyone anywhere can invest. So like we've had people in China who are getting funding for their ASIC their attempts to kind of set up a, 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 a ASIC, uh, I won't say foundry, but a, a line of ASICs. And um, I don't know whether that will turn out well or not, but they, they got the funding. And it's people from everywhere who are able to do that. And you can invest in tiny amounts, that's like smaller than a penny. And you can trade at a fraction of a penny. Uh, it'll scale up as well as down. It's easy to move the capital around. So if some laws come out in the UK where they say, you can't run this thing anymore, that's okay. We'll just move somewhere else because you know we're not using a bank account for this, and uh, like the funds are just sitting on a USB key. So it's very, very easy to move huge amounts of capital or huge amounts of value from one jurisdiction to another. So we can take advantage of of the differences in jurisdictions. Um, right now, it's okay to set up in the UK. That might not be the case in the future. We might want to move somewhere like Hong Kong or Singapore or whatever. Uh, no, that's not important. Okay, I'm going to talk about things that are not GLC specific. So I'm going to talk about Bitcoin OTC. Um, anybody here hear of Bitcoin OTC? All right, it's an over-the-counter marketplace where you basically you know, just talk on in a chat room with someone and work out a deal. And it's not very large in terms of the amount of liquidity and the amount of volume that's on there, but it has certainly been very useful to me. Um, this week, just gone like about four days ago, I had a desperate shortage of funds uh, for things that needed to be done for the conference. You know, like GOSE were a sponsor, and uh, you know, we're, we're, I've been trying to help out as much as I can. And I was waiting for a large deposit from, from MT Gox, and it had been held up for over a week and a half. I thought I'd put enough buffer room in there, uh, apparently not. Um, so I went on to OTC and I said, can anybody send me like 400 pounds and I will, I'll give you uh, X amount of Bitcoin as, as collateral. You know, like obviously it, it, the value like is equivalent. And I have my money in minutes, like within three minutes of, of the Bitcoin transaction going through. I had like, I had like 400 pound cash in my account that I was able to use and it saved my life. Um, and I think that's, really one of the cool things about Bitcoin in general is that we're able to move money and we're able to get things done at an incredible speed. Things happen so quickly and events happen so quickly. It's moving, we're evolving as an economy so much faster than, than the current financial system is able to because we, we're not under the weight of all this kind of crippling financial legislation. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, maybe kind of some, some of the illegal markets. Uh, several months ago we had an asset that was launched on GABC when I was away for the weekend. Uh, at the time I didn't vet the assets and you know you create it and it would go on the market straight away. 
And that was an asset for a pot farm. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm not against that kind of thing, but I wasn't really able to, to kind of accept that. I had to take it down because if, if I had left it there, we'd be all over the news. We'd be like the most famous stock exchange in the world for two days before we get shut down and I go to jail for like being a drug lord. Uh, and then I, then I thought like about the possibility of having a, an anonymous stock market running from inside a dark net where people could invest in things like, you know, pot futures. You know, like you pay an amount now, and like in six months' time, like three months' time, when the crop is ready, you get you know a nice big baggie. Um, but the, the, the problem with this is the anonymity. I've I've discovered a great pains that anonymous buyers are okay. That works very very well. You don't need to know who's buying stuff off you, but an anonymous seller is a bit of a problem, and they have a habit of kind of taking your money and just disappearing. So an anonymous stock exchange, running from inside a dark net, um, unless the person was like, I won't, I won't even say trustworthy, unless they, they had an extreme, uh, if this was like their political view and they didn't value anything else in their life, they might be able to run it like that. Um, but the person has to be almost at a, at a crazy kind of level to, to do this. As a general rule, though, it's not uh, it's not really feasible. At least from my experience, when GFC first started, we, we we let it kind of run anonymously. We didn't ask issuers to verify or anything, and it was just like scam city. Um, so anonymous buyers, awesome. Anonymous sellers, be careful. Uh, missing sectors are we haven't had anybody launch an asset for any gambling websites, which. You know, there should be like tons and tons of massive, awesome Bitcoin gambling websites all over the world. Bitcoin is like a major technology that's absolutely perfect for, for a website that does gambling. Um, it allows people to cash out in any jurisdiction, uh, big market being the US. Um, so if you have an idea and it's like related to gambling, I'd say definitely try Geodesy uh, because there's nothing there at the moment. So. Where do I want to go with GDC and the markets in general? I want us to start moving into the regular economy. Since 2008, banks have been you know, trying to look after their own stuff, and they've not been doing what banks were originally supposed to do. They've stopped lending. Um, okay, big companies can go to stock markets and acquire funds that way, but most people don't run a big company. And the small companies, the ones that provide jobs in the normal economy, are short on credit, they're short on cash, they cannot get the capital they need to get things rolling, to get, you know, to grow or to start. And this is what I'd like to see Bitcoin capital markets doing because we can, we can step in where the banks have stepped away and we can provide the capital needed to new businesses and grown businesses, small and medium, when they were locked out of a marketplace. And this could be like an awesome way to kickstart general growth for the economy, not just the Bitcoin economy. Obviously, the Bitcoin economy would, would uh, it would be fantastic for the Bitcoin economy if this was the case. There would be massive amounts of growth, but for the real, everyday fiat current economy. Um, and I think the Bitcoin, Bitcoin markets have great potential for this. Think of a, a coffee shop that needs a loan. Uh, think of someone who, like, who's, who's built like a, a little kind of very efficient engine in his shed uh, somewhere down the countryside near Yorkshire and he doesn't have enough money to kind of take it into production. You know, $50,000, $100,000 taken from a Bitcoin market will get there. And we can start registering like real businesses and get real businesses involved. And not only will it help Bitcoin itself grow, I think it'll make a huge difference in people's lives. Um, and that is, that, is, that is pretty much my talk. So thank you very much for listening. Are we are we doing questions? Do I have time for questions or are we doing questions? Yes, we should. Quick questions. Okay.
Um, I'll just like give the mic around to whoever's asked the question. Should we work? Do you want to speak in double shift? Okay. Hello? Okay, cool. So, first guy over here. Okay, uh, so are you experiencing some problems from governments, from, I don't know, police, like Interpol or anything? Are there questions asked, like, which you don't like? I have had zero interest or problems from government. Our largest problem has been from fraud, um, particularly with assets that tend to be from anonymous issuers. Okay, but what uh, do you have some lawyers, like very good lawyers, uh, or are you uh, are you thinking about moving your company to some nice like Caribbean islands or something? Because you know, I'm I'm not saying that government will be interested in you like tomorrow or this mm -hmm. month. But, but maybe I feel a that years. Is, they, I feel that one day, maybe in a few months they will. So mm -hmm. unless you you have a plan and you cannot tell us, or you just you have some ideas that you could tell us, okay, I'm safe, I have like, I don't know, you have five passports and uh, you have no problems, okay. I would like to hear what is your plan. Okay, so firstly, we can move GeoBC data, which is all, you know, the important part of GeoBC, the, the database of accounts and transactions, we can move that anywhere very, very quick. It's backed up in several places, encrypted, and then the capital on the market is in Bitcoin. So we can move that anywhere almost instantly. So if we do have problems, we can move the important stuff out of a jurisdiction that decides it's gonna crack down. Uh, secondly, well, I haven't really been talking to lawyers. I kind of just went into this, but I've been talking to other people and I will be getting a lawyer fairly soon. Um, yes, I, I'm convinced of that now, uh, but I've been trying to put it off because I hate lawyers. Next question, sir. Uh, going back, I guess, on the legal standpoint, yes. it's sort of a two-piece question. One being that uh, I think it's a fabulous idea thinking about standard, traditional businesses raising money. 